This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this episode, Jonathan is revisiting Microsoft's flagship shooter by taking a look at the weaponry of Halo Infinite. Another really fun weapon here, and it has two giant vertical bayonets on it. I mean, the chances of you stabbing yourself in the bits with, with this are high, I would say. <laughs> If you want to see more of Jonathan's take on the Halo franchise, make sure to subscribe as we've got a previous video on the series Iconic Firearms. And if you enjoy this kind of content, then make sure to keep an eye out for our new series Loadout, a show where we take a look at the history and impact of some of the most iconic weapons in gaming, from the M1 Garand and the Desert Eagle through to the minigun and the AK-47. Naturally, Jonathan will be making a fair few appearances over on that show too, so make sure to check that out. Right, let's look at Halo Infinite. Right, here is our new Halo Assault Rifle. Looking very spiffy, I might say. Lots of interesting detail on it now. And for those of you who've seen our, our other Halo video, controversially, for me at least, conventional 7.62 NATO ammunition. And actually, we get a really nicely modelled take on that now. I can see it in the magazine. It's a conventional, completely conventional magazine, just with normal feed lips. Reload is a bit weird. So he's not he's not holding it like a like an AR-15 magazine because it's it's short. It's a short magazine, so he's he's cupping it and inserting it like that. But he's he's doing it backhanded, super awkwardly. I don't don't really get that. And that really this brings me back yet again to this 762 by 51 problem. You're not fitting 36 rounds of 762 into that tiny little magazine. That is a 10 round magazine that he's holding there. But it is nice to see Master Chief exercising some trigger discipline uh, with the finger nice and clear of the, the trigger housing there. Right, the battle rifle, very much along the same lines. They, they keep, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And they are keeping all the good stuff in terms of design aesthetics. We still got a, a, a disappointingly 20th century, actually, looking optical sight on there with at least one more adjustment turret than it probably needs for, <laughs> for a scope of that nature. This and the um, assault rifle have more than one inspiration, I think. We've spoken about the F2000 for the assault rifle and the FAMAS for the battle rifle, I think is, despite this very much not being a battle rifle, this is an assault rifle by any or any reasonable standard, but the overall look is definitely there. We've got the, the big chunky front grip, the great big carrying handle, the bullpup configuration, but that's kind of where the resemblance ends, as, as I think we covered before. Really a very different design in detail. So there's a tendency for, and I'm, I'm guilty of this sometimes as well, to look at the silhouette of a gun and say, ah, oh, yes, that's one of those. But when you when you look at it with you know, when you look at as many guns as I do day in day out, you do develop an eye for the detail, and you can generally anticipate or, or guess perhaps <laughs> accurately, hopefully, where uh, artists have taken actual design cues from a gun, not just the overall look. And I, again, I don't think you can dispute that someone saw a FAMAS <laughs> before they designed the battle rifle. But there's a lot more to it than that. Well, this one's a new one on me, the VK-78, I think is written on the side of it. It's an odd mixture of futuristic and retro with the big ventilated heat shield at the front. And the, the magazine is just you know, sheet metal body with uh, witness holes pierced in it, so you can see the rounds in it. it almost looks like a, a Makarov pistol mag. And the, and the receiver is open, so you can see those witness holes in the magazine. The sight's weird as well, because it looks like a reflex sight, quite a chunky one for for a future site seems to function like a like a zoo it has quite a zoom when you when your eye goes to it i don't know if it's meant to be hooked into your helmet somehow to give you that what appears to be magnification or if i'm just misunderstanding what's going on overall look very reminiscent of the chris vector but that's kind of coincidence because the, the magazine housing here is not also the, uh, the the housing for the recoiling bolt which it is in the vector that's a very specific design handling pistol cartridges this is just a very long magazine housing, angled quite steeply. Probably too steeply to work effectively with rifle cartridges, but I don't know what the rounds actually look like.
Right, an interesting bit of alien kit here, reminiscent of some 60s, 70s sci-fi weapons, maybe. Lots of energy crackling around a revolving drum, we're not sure what that's supposed to do. There appears to be mechanical stuff going on, there's a some sort of bolt moving back and forth at the back. I, obviously, I don't know what that does, I'm not sure anyone would. So yeah, I mean, why not? All, all bets are off, aren't they, with future alien technology? Who knows how it works? Uh, I like the design though, it's something a bit different, doesn't look like a rip off of anything else. Doesn't necessarily look particularly Halo either. Maybe it has like a distant franchise resemblance to the Magnum pistol, like an alien version of that, but um, only if you squint. Another weird gun, energy weapon, clearly, but operating and even sounding a lot like a shotgun. And it's got these interesting fire modes, vertical and horizontal spread. And the, the horizontal is very much a, a sci-fi take on the Vietnam War vintage shotgun duckbill attachment that spreads the shot to, to increase the chance of hitting. Yeah, they're, they're being very creative here in, um, in, in the designs. Not easy to do with a long running franchise of anything to do something new that doesn't break your established traditions. So uh, I'm liking what I see so far. That means more Marines are in trouble. Let's give them a hand. What an interesting gun. Hydra? MLRS? MLRS being a real world abbreviation for multiple launch rocket system which I guess this is. Now, normally that means multiple rockets launched at the same time. And we're talking here, vehicle mounted artillery rockets. So this is like a man portable take on that idea, I guess. Interestingly, it's a sort of a tube fed drum. I don't know how that mechanism would function. You're, you're thumbing uh, miniature rockets into a tube, which then retracts into the, like each one is then conveyed into a chamber in the revolving drum. I think it's probably a bit fudged, but it is cool. I, I, I like mechanically complex looking things, even if I can't get my head around how they might function. I'm not sure why you wouldn't just load the drum because these um, these open chamber type things are easily accessible from the side. So you could just press a rocket into each one and advance it with a button, or maybe it would rotate itself when you insert a rocket. Don't know why you need the pop out loading gate slash tube thing, but it does look cool. Another really fun weapon here. Not seen anything quite like this before. It's a sort of revolver slash slug firing shotgun handgun thing. Almost reminiscent of a striker or a protector, but well, not really handgun size, but <laughs> handgun format. And it has two giant vertical bayonets on it, which is a bit odd. I mean, the chances of you stabbing yourself in your in the bits with with this are high, I would say. Uh, I wouldn't like to design a holster for this thing. The one criticism I, I would lay on this one is it's, it suffers from lack of sighting problems. There's no obvious means of sighting other than the head up display and the helmet, which gives you a reticle at all times. So as long as you're equipped with that technology, it's fine. How you'd aim it otherwise, well, clearly you wouldn't. And I don't know why it doesn't just have a a gutter style close quarter sight on the top of it. Potential slight issue as well is these rounds appear to not be retained all the way around the travel of the drum or the cylinder. So it looks like they might be able to fall out, which is, <laughs> that's the problem, needless to say. Right, the needler has made a comeback and the needles are looking nicer than ever, very pointy and semi-translucent. I really like the way those are modeled. It really is just a, an updated take on the original gun, which brings with it the same confusion for my brain as to how the heck this thing's supposed to work. We've got, what, 26 rounds this is supposed to have? I mean, maths isn't my strong point, but there are fewer holes than that in the top of the gun. I, I guess it's kind of using the crystals to create projectiles and pulling them into the gun as it does so. Like a, like a glue gun, but with spiky shards of death. That's the best I can uh, guess. So anyone who's, who's read the background information on that, please, please chime in. Oh, 
Right, a another Halo handgun. It does fit the universe look, but it's recognizably modern, if that makes sense. It doesn't look like it's got a, it's got a an ex visible extractor. It's got serrations on the slide. It has a slide, albeit not a full slide. Uh, some sort of aiming module in front of the trigger guard, a conventional grip and trigger guard, and what looks like a mainly polymer frame. So it does look like an extrapolation of a modern day semi-automatic pistol. Yeah, this thing seems pretty powerful. Some sort of 10 millimeter round. It seems to fire with some authority and to strike with even more authority. For a pistol, for a video game pistol, it's got a lot of, a lot of stopping power. So I, I don't know if this is a replacement for the, for the Magnum or, or a, uh, a parallel to it, but um, pretty effective for a pistol. In a big way. Clock's ticking, Chief. How much longer? One gun down. Two more to go. We are running out of time. The Harbinger and the Banished share the same goal. Right, we're going to take on a plasma rifle, firing bursts now. The usual rationale for burst, well, two rationales for burst fire with conventional firearms. One is to uh, save money, <laughs> save ammunition at least. And the other is to increase, to balance accuracy with hit probability. So by firing a burst in theory, you don't transfer as much felt recoil to the shooter and therefore are more likely to hit but then you're hitting with more than one bullet or you're increasing your chance of hitting with one of that burst of bullets. Whether that applies to plasma weapons, I guess we don't know yet. It'll depend on how much recoil a plasma projectile, if we can call it that, would have. Because if, if plasma has mass, but nowhere near the mass of a bullet. So I'm rambling now, but I don't think that there'd be a need for burst fire. That's what I'm getting. He's taken Right, the Spanker has made a comeback. M41, which is a designation that should only ever be used for the pulse rifle, sorry. I still don't understand how this thing's supposed to work. It looks like they fixed the rotation issue that was confusing me before, but this is some sort of rocket system, but it has a lot of recoil, uh, which looking at it, I guess it would, because if it did, well, it's not really a rocket, is it? It's basically a um, handheld artillery piece, more than anything else. And for some reason, it's, it rotates the, the barrel or launch tube from one to the other to fire one and then the other. Can't imagine a system that would function that way. If it's a rocket launcher, you only need the tube it's in and just an electrical impulse to, to fire the rocket because the rocket is the weapon. The launcher is just a launcher. If it resembles anything, it's a grenade launcher because grenade launchers are not recoilless uh, and they're not rocket projected. They are giant cartridges. And that's really more than anything what this resembles, which would explain the recoil, would explain the need to align the barrel with a breech mechanism to actually fire the thing and support the caseless projectile till it's fired. That's, that's my kind of, my interpretation of what this thing really is. Even though when it's fired, it behaves like a rocket. Bit of a puzzle, but it does point toward a potential future. There's already a uh, conceptual system for an underbarrel missile launcher that gives you the ability, each infantryman the ability to fire one massive projectile that is then guided to the top. Visually interesting weapon, this one. We've got that um, signature blue glow of some sort of energy weapon and some kind of battery pack reloading system, uh, slapping it in with the fist there and it ejects itself, goes flying out the gun, which, yeah, might make sense for the magazine fed weapons in the right um, situation, but so far hasn't hasn't caught on. And actually, if we watch the round counter, this thing's firing bursts of, of energy really really fast like a like a hyper burst three four five thousand rounds per minute rate of fire almost to the point where i'm not sure why they bothered because i'm not sure you're ever going to get any spread of shot as it were but um a very a very say unique looking design which is hard to accomplish these days whether it's su substantially different in gameplay terms I'll, I'll let you be the judges on that one All right, we've got a new shotgun, drum fed. Not too futuristic looking. I'm not sure what's going on on the side of it there where the ejection port sort of bolt area is, or at least 
might be. I think I'm looking at a giant cocking handle. It's, I guess it's um, a little bit jackhammer, isn't it? Sort of space jackhammer. The, the infamous video game, or the gun that's more, way more used in, in video games than in real life, the pan called jackhammer. Uh, so pump, pump, I'm a bit skeptical about pump action. Skeptical about pump combined with drum magazine. I can't think of a single example of a drum fed pump action shotgun. And there's probably a good reason for that. The whole mechanics of this are a mystery to me because the drum is mounted very low in the receiver. Normally when that's the case, there is a feed tower on top of that drum. It goes up into the receiver so that the top round, it feeds down to one, top round is stripped into the chamber and fired. Alternatively, you could have a, a drum where it's a revolver. So each round is in its own chamber and the chamber is revolved into alignment with the barrel. It's not what's happening here because the barrel is higher up in the gun. So really a mystery as to how this thing feeds its rounds into a chamber to then fire them. I wouldn't be going on about this if this thing wasn't using conventional 12 gauge ammunition as it proudly proclaims on the side of the gun. And therefore we have to think about how, how that would work. Wow, this thing is impressive. The appropriately named skewer, because you can skewer them with the giant spike projectile that it fires, almost like um, blade steak shotgun type weapons that he uses. Or you can skewer them with the conventional bolted on, permanently attached bayonet that's very Gears of War, I think, that's underneath the spike that you can shoot. So you're never short of spikes on this thing. Um, slightly curious mechanism, um, although I don't know why I'm saying that. This is a, a fictional spike launching rocket launcher thing, so I can't really critique it at all. But to load the projectile in the, or the munition into the front and then operate some sort of lever to seat it backwards and then latch it in place, I'd have thought you either want to push that thing in place till it locks, or you'd want to lift the latch up, insert the munition, slap down the thing. Putting it in, lifting it up, and putting it down seems a bit weird, but that's the way it works. And then we've got a whole clown car full of Marines armed with these things. And it's a different version because the giant spikes are also exploding. So I'm guessing you get a teacup saucer size, a diameter spike in your chest that then explodes. So I imagine is how it works. But I suppose you haven't got long to, to suffer at least. Right, the, um, or an updated version of the, the venerable, well, it's an anti-material rifle, isn't it? It's got the big carry handle on the on the chassis. It's a large caliber. It's got a muzzle brake on it, reasonably powerful scope and high-tech scope in this case. And it does that job well, although we also see that uh, the likes of Master Chief can use this thing as a glorified pinpoint shotgun, <laughs> sort of. So firing it from the hip without the scopes, using the reticle. And if you get the shot lined up, you don't have the spread of a shotgun, but you have the sort of insta-kill effect of, of a shotgun. And it's self-loading, it's semi-automatic. So weirdly, it almost works like a shotgun. So we've got a view in the scope. I mean, it looks like we've got the option of five power or 10 power. We've got a range finder. I don't know what the in-game functionality of that is. Well, I, I often find range finders they're there for, for visual interest more than anything. They don't, it's rare that they help you in the game as they would help a real sniper. We've got functionality in there. We've got a, a wide field of view, which is not common for modern sniper or anti-material rifles. That's something that may come in time with advanced optics. So yeah, I mean, the obvious advantage of that is you don't have to come out of the scope or rely on a spotter to spot other targets. You can potentially see your next target in your field of view without having to do anything else. I suppose the only, only other thing I'd say is that um, it probably takes a Spartan to use an anti-material rifle as a melee weapon. Uh, join us again next week, if you will. Also over on the Royal Armouries channel, we have a, a series going there on firearms and there's other stuff on there that might interest you. Uh, check out our website as well, social media, come and visit the museum if you're able to do so. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you again next time.